we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Mighty God, we ask that you speak to us today. Open our ears to hear from you. Give us listening hearts. Give us a grace to put these words we're about to hear into practice. Cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We rebuke the works of darkness and the powers of the wicked. Arise, Almighty God, and help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to be holy. Help us to rededicate our lives to you. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer, even for saving us to see this moment and for keeping us in the fold. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're talking about you must be holy. You must be holy. Why must? Why not me? You may be holy. You could be holy. You might be holy. Why not a, probab a probability? This is a must because it is a command from God. In case you have not subscribed, please subscribe to this uh, channel. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell. If you like and comment on the video, it helps the social media to recommend this video to other people. So please help us by doing so and us share our videos. If the Lord lays it in your heart, please support our ministry. Our candidates are on the screen. And the Lord we serve, we surely bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You must be holy. Let's look at the test for today. First Peter chapter 1 verse 13 to 17. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be, 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 underline the word be, this is a command, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. If you call on the Father, who is without the respect of persons who will judge every man according to what he has done. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, in holy fear. Be ye holy, for I am holy. I want us to consider this passage and look at a few sentences here. A lot of people say, we are born again. Salvation is not by works, it's by faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus did it all. So, is there any reason to be holy? Can a man be holy? <laughs> the question is that, if it is impossible for a man to be holy, then it will become useless for God to 
demands for something that he knows is unattainable. So for the fact that God said, be ye holy for I am holy, it means it is attainable. He, his commands, his laws are not burdensome. If it is impossible, he will not ask for it. But we, as we go through to this message, we will know that it is a command. We will understand fully why he said, you must be holy. Because without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Let's look at the text. Wherefore, get up your loins, get up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end. To the end. It's not just having hope, but you have to hope to the end. Until Jesus Christ is revealed. Some people say, we believe and we have confessed him. And they go back to their old lifestyle. But what does the Bible say? Verse 14. It says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. That means there was a time the, these people were in their former lust. They were living for the flesh. They were walking by the flesh. They were being led and dominated by their, by their own flesh. Now, Apostle Peter is saying that that time is past. That was the time of ignorance. Now, you have been bought with a prize. Now, you have been translated into the kingdom of God. What you need to do now is that you must be holy. You must not fashion yourself. You must not live according to your former lust in ignorance. But now that you have been translated into the kingdom of God, you have to be sober. You have to hope to the end. You have to be holy. And this is the reason. He says, as obedient children, now you are called obedient children, not stubborn children, not disobedient children. But as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in no manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Holiness is the nature of God. When we were created, we were created holy. We were not created as sinners. We were created as perfect human beings. Remember, the Bible says that Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, that God breathed into the nostril of man and man became a living soul. God gave his own life to us, his own spirit. So it is God's spirit that is in us that gave us life, his very own life. When man dies, his breath is taken away from him. He no longer breathes. So when God breathed into us, the same word is a word, the same word for breath is the same word for spirit. So when God breathed into us, what he did is that he put his own spirit inside of us so that we can have his very own life. The word breath means, is, is transliterated, neshama, neshama. And it means the breath of God, the breath of man. Every breathing thing 
It means spirit, the spirit of man. So when the Bible says the breath of life, he gave us his own very life. He breathed into us the breath of life. And remember, man was created in the image and in the likeness of God. This is why it is a must for man to be holy. But when man sinned, as a matter of fact, it came to the point in Genesis chapter 6 that God regretted creating man. Why? Because sin increased at an alarming rate to the point that God said, no, my spirit will never be in man again. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of his heart, of, his, of the thoughts of his heart, was only evil continually. Verse 6, And it repented the law that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him, at his heart. You see? So God wasn't happy. He said, My spirit will no longer strive with man again. Verse 3 And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. God reduced the number of years man was to live. Because of wickedness, because of the, the increase of iniquity on earth. Man is a temple of God, but when man sinned, God said, no, my spirit will not always strive with man again. Let me distance myself from him. Because every imagination of his heart is evil continually. Every imagination of the thought of his heart is evil continually. So I'm not going to strive with man continually. Let me give him some chance because of sin. The spirit, the very life that God breathed into us, is a Holy Spirit. That spirit is not a possessed, demonically possessed spirit. That spirit is not a wicked spirit. That spirit is not a sinful spirit. That spirit is a Holy Spirit. And the body was holy. But when man started committing some abominable iniquities, remember the first time man sinned, God drove him from the garden. Because that garden was a paradise. It is only someone that is holy, that is qualified to live there. So God drove him. When Jesus Christ came, he restored us back to God. And the warning is, now that you have been restored, now that you have been forgiven, now that you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, now that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, as it was before in the Garden of Eden, before the fall, before you were driven out, don't go back to those same things. Because God is holy. So you must be holy in all manner of conversation. In everything you do, you must be holy. Do not live according to your former lust. Now you have been brought into a kingdom. The kingdom that is a holy kingdom. A kingdom that nothing unclean comes into. Now you must be holy. For it is written, the Lord says, I am a holy God. Leviticus 11, 44 to 45. For I am the Lord your God. 
ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy for I am holy neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth for I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God ye shall therefore be holy for I am holy i have called you i have separated you for myself i have set you apart therefore you must be holy let me tell you this kingdom there is nothing unclean that comes into it we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light we are not just saved from the fire of hell we are not just delivered from eternal wrath but we were admitted into a kingdom whose god is a holy god where nothing unclean comes into i don't know why a lot of people's minds have been so dull to understand these things colossians chapter 1 verses 12 and 13 giving thanks unto the father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light saints in light not in darkness who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son we now belong to a kingdom we are not saints when we die we are saints from the moment we receive the lord jesus christ and we become a part of the body of christ the church look at paul writing to the church he addresses them as saints to the saints in corinth we are saints People attach the title saints to people who are dead. But you don't become a saint when you die. You become a saint the moment you are washed from your sins and the righteousness of Christ is imputed to you. That is when you become a saint. A lot of people also believe that it is when you die and then after the judgment you enter the kingdom of God. No! We are part of the kingdom when we get baptized, when we get repent and we get baptized. Baptism is the initiatory ceremony that admits you, that marks your admission into the kingdom of God, the church. The body of Christ. It is an initiation. It is an admission. Into the body of Christ. That is why it is very very important. Now that you have given your life to Jesus Christ. Not that you have believed and accepted. We need to formally admit you. We need to make sure you confess the coming of Jesus Christ. In person, the incarnate word into the world that he actually came, that he died and was buried and rose again. Now, you too, because he died and rose again, you have the hope that you can be restored back to God because without the death of Jesus Christ without his resurrection then you will never be restored back to God because he is the lamb of God that taketh the sins of the whole world so when he died and was buried he paid the debt for your sins and now you want to be born again you have to partake in the same process of dying with Christ we are buried with him in baptism through baptism we partake in his death we die with Christ and we resurrect again into newness of life so 
without except you be born of the water and the spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. So when you are baptized and you are regenerated, you are admitted into the body of Christ. It is then you become a member of the kingdom. It is not when you die. It is not after the final judgment that you become a member of the kingdom. No, your name is already written in the book of life. That is why as chosen, as a chosen generation, as a people set apart for God himself, God's own people, we are not allowed to do the former things we used to do. We are not allowed to live the former lifestyle in our ignorance because we have been admitted into a holy kingdom. Revelation chapter 21 verse 27 says, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. When is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? It's not after your death. It's not after the judgment of God. It is when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. When you repented. That is when your name was written in the book of life. And if you fall off, your name could be removed from the book of life. A lot of people say, oh, once you, once you give your life to Jesus Christ, then that's all. Your name cannot be removed. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Look at the same passage we read before. Look at it. Look at verse 17. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judge it according to, to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. In fear, this is scripture. He said, pass it in fear. In fear. Do not say because we have been saved, we are always saved and there is no need to fear. Pass it in fear if you are not born again. If you did not repent and pass through the normal process, if you do not complete the process, you will say, oh, this is not possible. But once you are regenerated, when you are born of the word, when you are born of the water, when you are born of the spirit, when you are born of these three, I tell you the truth. You become a part of the kingdom. And you know that the God we serve, because the Spirit of God lives in you, He convicts your heart, He convinces you, you know that you need to tread with carefulness because you live in a world of sin. Though we are in the world, we are not of the world. You have to be careful. Because the God that has called us is without the respect of persons. He does not show any form of partiality. You remember Esau? He repented at a late hour. And he lost it. Esau. Lost it. He sold his birthright. That is how a lot of people play with their salvation today. Don't believe that, oh, I can do anything I want. I have received salvation. And it is final. You cannot be in the kingdom of light. You cannot, having been translated 
from the power of darkness, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light. When you have been declared righteous, when you have been crowned as a saint in the kingdom, you cannot go back to adultery. You cannot go back to stealing. You cannot go back to scamming people. You cannot go back to gossiping. You cannot go back to the dark kingdoms you used to belong. But today we have all horrible things in church. People who claim to be born again. People who speak in tongues. Yet they still belong to the kingdom of darkness. I tell you, you have no part in this kingdom. Except you be born again. If you are not holy, you can never see the kingdom of God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 and verse 15. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. And thereby many be defiled. A lot of people who were once strong have become defiled. They are no longer qualified for the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ said, no man... Have he put his hand to the plow and looked back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Once you are a part of the kingdom and you put your hands to the plow, there is no looking back again. If you are falling, please pick up the pieces of your faith and keep moving. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. Do not say, I was once saved and I will always be saved. Do not say, oh, because God is a merciful God, now I can live my life the way I want and still be a part of this kingdom. No, it is not possible. It is not. We have been set apart. We are a member. We are members of his body. Nothing unclean. Revelation 21, 27. Nothing unclean. Nothing that defileth. No one that worketh abomination, no one that maketh a lie, will enter that kingdom. Only those whose names are written in the book of life. Have you been brainwashed to believe that nobody can be holy? Have you been brainwashed? Have you been brainwashed to believe that once you were saved, you were always saved? Have you been brainwashed to believe that we no longer have to do the works of righteousness. Then, of what use is the death of Jesus Christ on the cross? If after his death, after empowering you with his word, with the Holy Spirit, after regeneration, then you tell me that a human being cannot be holy. Listen, Jesus Christ said, be ye perfect. Even as your heavenly father is perfect. Jesus gave that command. So why do you think that it is not possible? Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 20. 5 verse 20. He said, for I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will not see it. You will not enter. Except your righteousness. Surpasses that of the Pharisees and the scribes. In verse 48 of Matthew chapter 5. He said. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven. Is perfect. This is Bible. Can a man be perfect? The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. He was holy. He was a perfect man. And God took him. Job, Job was perfect. Job was perfect. Perfection doesn't mean that you are not going to make mistakes. That is not perfection. 
Even experts, they make mistakes. Lecturers, they make mistakes. I'm not talking about mistakes. It is about a lifestyle. Do I struggle not to commit stealing or adultery, fornication, uh, robbery? I don't struggle. I don't. Do I struggle to do good? I don't struggle. As a matter of fact, when I see maybe an opportunity to help an elderly woman to cross the road, when I see the opportunity and I couldn't use it, I feel bad. Because it's my nature to help. Even yesterday I was in the... No, not yesterday. On Friday I was in the bank. An elderly woman was trying to open the entrance door. The computerized door. She couldn't go through it. So the young man at his back, at the woman's back, opened it and overtake the woman and left. But do I need to do that? That is not my nation. So I told her, I said, Mama, please come here. I opened the, I was the next one. There were two. I was at the, I was in front of the one by the left. She was trying to enter the one at the right hand side. I brought her to my side so that I can guide her carefully to go inside. I made her pass through first. That never cost me anything. That is my nature. That is your nature as a born again child of God. What are the problems we have today? A lot of people are not born again. They don't repent. They only say mere prayers. And after those prayers, someone who is living in sin declares them righteous, declares them born again. And they practice how to speak in tongues. They practice Christianity. They practice to live like a Christian. So everything is superficial. The, um, there is no regeneration. There is The Spirit of God is not giving birth to them. The Word of God is not transforming them. There is no transformation. There is no regeneration. What they do is adaptation. They adapt to the Christian lifestyle. No. When you are born again, you are convicted. The Spirit of God lives in you. You don't struggle to do good because it is your nature. This is your new nature. Christ lives through us. He expresses himself through us. We are the temple of God. The Spirit of God lives inside of us. And so long as we walk by the Spirit and we are sober, we live like Christ. We walk in holiness. We walk in righteousness. We no longer steal. We no longer kill. We no longer commit sexual immorality. It is a, it's about a nation. It's about the nation. So if you still have the old man operating in your life, the old Adamic nation in oppression in your life, you are going to be struggling. But once you are born again, you are regenerated, there will be no struggle to do good. I know the flesh a lot of times when you relapse and do not live according to the spirit, when you do not walk according to the spirit, the flesh will be growing. The influence of the flesh will be growing and tries to control you. That is what the Bible says, that we should walk by the spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The fact that you are weak, maybe you, you pray less, you don't read your Bible as you ought to, you don't have enough self-discipline as you ought to, and 
you start struggling with your flesh, that doesn't mean you are not born again. What is happening is that you are giving too much room to your flesh. And you need to pick up yourself. If you give yourself too much entertainment, if you give yourself too much sleep, and you don't focus on spiritual things, you create room for temptation. A lot of people want to experience God. They want to experience His Holy Spirit. They want to have an encounter, but they don't read their Bibles. They don't listen to sermons. They don't attend churches regularly. They don't do online meetings. They don't spend time in prayer. They don't meditate on the Word of God. Yet you want an encounter. Let me tell you, there is no encounter for you if you cannot do these simple things. If you want an encounter, grow gradually. Start growing on a daily basis. That is the best encounter you can ever have. And as you grow, as your flesh is being mortified, as you kill the deeds of the flesh, and you give room to the things of the Spirit, you discover that the Holy Spirit is finding your body more and more comfortable. And now you, you start seeing the gifts of the Spirit. You start seeing that now you start dreaming. You start having visions. The gifts are now manifesting. Even we, God speaks, God speaks to. There are times he tells us to give him time. You could say, go and spend time in prayer. Go and read my word. I want you to fast. I want you to satisfy yourself. So before he can talk to you, before he can reveal some things to you. Sometimes he will tell me, I've been trying to talk to you, but you haven't given me the chance. So what I need to do that moment is create the atmosphere, is create the time. So do not think that you're going to get one supernatural encounter when you don't do your daily Christian exercise. Forget about that encounter. That is how a lot of people have been deceived. Make it a lifestyle. Survive daily. Pursue Christ on a daily basis. You wake up Read your Bible. Pray. Meditate on the word of God. Worship. Attend fellowship. On fellowship days. Stay away from uh, worldly people who will say things that will corrupt your mind. Reduce your entertainment. The entertainment that is in case of Holy Spirit, stop it totally. And you will see yourself growing. For many years, I never heard from God. They laid hands on my head and asked the Holy Spirit to come. There was no encounter. There was no manifestation. I used to say, why is it that people fall? I don't fall. But on the 21st of March, 2005, I was just at home. I was crying and asking God questions and asking God, why this sickness? Why this stomach pain? You promised me. That in the next 13 days, and I think 13 days, you're going to heal me. Why am I not seeing healing? But today, because I marked the date. Why is it that the pains have become much? As I was complaining, power came into me. The Holy Spirit started shaking me violently. And then my tongue opened. I started speaking in tongues. That was the first time I spoke in tongues. That was the first time the Lord spoke and I held him without sleeping. You have to grow. Grow your life. Grow yourself. 
There were times before I could hear from God, I would pray. And then, especially on a Sunday service, I'll be dozing in church. I will intentionally want to sleep. Especially during announcements, during sermons, I'm not saying you should sleep when the message is going on. <laughs> Don't sleep. Listen to the word of God. Because that was a time I discovered that when I'm in church, that was early 2000. When I'm in church and I'm about sleeping, between being conscious and unconscious, I used to have visions. Quickly, they would just come. And I was enjoying those moments. But after the time, after 2005, 21st of March, without sleeping, I could see visions. He speaks to me. A lot of times I've, I've heard him, not many times anyway, when I was in church, in cathedral. A couple of times he spoke to me, he said, I don't want you to write anything down. Just go to the pulpit and I will speak through you. A cathedral. And I will go with just my Bible, introduce a topic, and start preaching. Without preparation. And I've heard him sometimes after preaching some hard truths to the people. I would hear his voice. Maybe when I'm sleepy, he would say, Thank you very much for that message. He would say thank you for delivering that message. The Holy Spirit would appreciate me. Are you regenerated? Are you born again? Are you holy? Remember without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Have you been deceived to believe that Jesus Christ has done everything? Therefore, there is no need for us to do anything. Finally, let's read Ephesians 5, verses 5 to 18. For this ye know, that no homonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let me ask you this. Are there not prostitutes in church today? Some of them are very faithful titans. Their pastors are telling them, don't worry. The grace of God covers your sin. May God bless your business. Sometimes the pastors know that these people are prostitutes. Sometimes they know that these are criminals. As a matter of fact, <laughs> ah. Some pastors in Nigeria and some false prophets, false pastors, these are not pastors anyway. They will say, lift up your phone. Lift up your phone. You will pick money this week. Your clients will pay you. Who are they calling clients? Victims of internet fraud. They pray for them. They tell them, don't worry. God will bless you. You can't pray for a scammer to prosper. What they need is an encounter that will change them. If possible, land them in prison or encounter the word of God and repent. Everyone should work with their hands. None should be a thief. But today we have a sort of different criminals and sinners in church. Some of whom are adapting to the Christian system, but have no encounter whatsoever with the God they profess has become their God. None of these people have, have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Verse 6, let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no pastor, let no false prophet deceive you. Let no brother, no teacher, no nobody deceive you. 
For because of these things come at the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Let me tell you one thing the Lord told me some years ago. I think over, over 10 years now. I think He said, I'm warning you for this thing. You think it is small. If you don't change, I will cast you into hell. I will not use because of my love for you. To change. God doesn't change. It doesn't matter how important you are. Some people are really being used by God. But there are things in their lives. They don't want to leave them alone. They think, oh, if God doesn't approve of me, why does he speak to me? Why does he use me to preach? Why? No. You are a vessel in the hand of God. But you are also responsible to live a holy life. Who are those in Matthew chapter 7 who said, My Lord, in your name we perform miracles. In your name we cast out demons. We worked for you. We have dined with you. He will say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So the fact that the Lord is using you doesn't mean you don't need to live a holy life. The Lord can use anybody. He used a donkey to speak. He spoke through a donkey. How much more? A human being. The fact that the Lord speaks to you and speaks through you doesn't mean that he approves of your sinful lifestyle. No, he doesn't. Let's continue with this passage. Verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness. But now ye but now are Ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You are not children of light. Therefore, walk as children of light. The very things that brought him from heaven to die. Don't do them anymore. Let us pray. Lord, your commands are not burdened so. We know it's not easy. The older the world gets, the more iniquity was strong. The more the darkness grows all over the earth. And the more it becomes difficult for us to walk in the light. But we're Sin abounds much. Grace abounds even the much. Therefore, Lord, give us grace to follow you all the days of our lives. You are warning us to examine ourselves and repent of everything that can prevent us from entering the kingdom. Lord, strengthen us. Father, strengthen us. Each end of this, please help us. Mighty God, please help us. Be merciful to us, O Lord. Be merciful to us, Jesus. Have mercy upon our Savior. Put our trust in you. We are not counting on our own strength. But you that can enable us Lord, enable us to walk in righteousness, in holiness. Don't let us look back. If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I pray for you that the Lord will strengthen you. May the Lord forgive you your sins and help you to follow him to the end. 
Lord, I pray for those who are supporting our ministries and our charity organization. Father, bless them. Lord Jesus, release your blessings upon their lives. May the Lord God Almighty bless you. Take away every challenge from your life. And be well with you. As you give to the work of God, labor in the vineyard, preach to people, and your hardship, may the Lord give you the grace to make the kingdom so that you can receive your crown of life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please uh, share this video and also subscribe to this channel. If you're watching on Facebook or on Instagram, wherever you're watching us, please follow us, like our pages and follow us. And also, please, I beg you, schools will be resuming tomorrow. Please support us so that we can uh, continue to sustain a scholarship program and not remove some of the children from a scholarship. Times are hard. Times are really, really hard. Uh, this time we couldn't admit anyone because of the level of financial constraints that we have. But if you want to pick up any child and take care of their school fees, it's not much. By the grace of God, uh, those in the public schools, their school fees are minimal. And there are so many. Please uh, contact me and I will let you know what you need to do. May the Lord God Almighty bless you and continue to uplift you in Jesus' name. Please recommend this ministry to someone. God bless you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.